Good Thursday morning, everybody. Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here. Let's talk about the severe weather potential for Friday. I'm going to show you why there's potential there, but it's not a sure thing that we're going to see even widespread severe weather. I think the isolated risk is certainly there. Let me show you the wider view here because you probably heard the thunder and lightning overnight had our first wave of rain coming through. We could see another wave of rain today um, as this moisture back to the west starts to push in. But that's not the main system for severe weather. The main system for severe weather is going to be across the southern part of the country. Doesn't look like much right now, but see this low pressure coming out of New Mexico? That's the real story. Let's look at the, um, the water vapor loop and you can see that energy uh, right there over Phoenix heading towards Nogales and Juarez. That is pushing to the east. That is the energy that's going to extend into Texas later today and really kick off what should be a pretty significant severe weather outbreak there. Let me show you the severe weather uh, setup today. We'll go to the day one setup right here, and you can see that setup. Basically, eastern Texas, the Arklatex region, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas, and the area highlighted is the area where the, there's a more significant risk as we go into today and tonight. Tomorrow, the risk for the Carolinas Notice it got whittled down a little bit from yesterday, kind of what I expected. Now, I'll tell you, it's more of a sure thing that we're going to see severe weather here. The questions start arising, how much makes it here? Obviously, the further west you go, the better the chance. The further east you go, the lower the chance of seeing some severe weather. Now, potentially, some of these storms are going to have damaging winds. The probability of winds are around 30%. The tornado probability, again, um, the green is 2%, the brown is 5%. So notice the tornado probabilities are much higher in the mountains back into Tennessee, Kentucky, um, northern Alabama, and Georgia. So I, I kind of agree with this right now based on what we're seeing. But kind of let me show you how this unfolds. And I'll show you some of the pitfalls in the forecast, but also some of the things that could make this get a little worse. So let's start real wide with this initially. And you can see that's the rain we're seeing today. Watch what happens over parts of Texas. You can see the rain heading towards the Carolinas. Again, not expecting any of these to be severe, but look at what's happening back here, especially as this energy out of New Mexico gets into Texas. Watch how this just explodes this afternoon. I mean, this is a pretty nasty setup. Um, you know, if I'm in Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, <coughs> excuse me, I'm definitely much more concerned than I am here in the Carolinas. We'll have good old fashioned rain here. Um, as we go into tonight, into tomorrow, um, the line begins to kind of take some shape. But what's interesting, and this has been the case with the last couple of storms, really potent storm here. If this was gonna travel due east, we would certainly have a slam dunk of some type of severe weather. The problem is the energy watch, it's gonna go up this direction, which starts pooling some of the ingredients up into the Ohio Valley. It doesn't remove all of them, but it reduces some of the risk. In fact, today and even last night, we saw that the warm front is way up here now and moving north. Initially, the warm front was down in here, which if you're closer to the warm front and the cold front meeting up, you got a lot more what we call helicity or shear in place. You could still see a broken line of thunderstorms. And again, these could be supercells. So in you know, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, yeah, looks like a severe weather risk. But watch as the line gets closer to us during the day tomorrow. This is one o'clock Friday afternoon, by the way. We get to three o'clock the line starts moving into the mountains but the worst storms actually start to develop up here in kentucky west virginia and ohio down here they're much more isolated now there's ingredients for these storms to become severe i just think there's going to be very few of them which means the opportunity for one or two being severe is still there but it's not going to be widespread this is 6 p.m friday here's 7 p.m so yeah there's a broken line there but look what's going on to the north that's a much more severe setup we'll go through time a little bit more you can see the line there's the front so to me, the way this setup is, yeah, isolated tornado, but this looks like straight line winds because one thing I can tell you, there is some really potent winds with this system. And so if these broken line, when weather is mixes down those strong winds to the surface, we're going to see some damaging wind threat as it pushes through. Now let's switch this up and show you some of the other parameters, that thunderstorm fuel. All right, this is our thunderstorm fuel. You can see the brighter the colors, the more fuel you have. If you want to interested, there's CAPE is in joules per kilogram squared. Don't worry, it's, it's an energy index, basically. So you can see the energy. Look at all that energy in Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana. We'll go into tonight. Notice we're kind of, you know, we're cooled off here in the Carolinas, so not much going on. So there is a narrow ribbon of what we call Cape. It surges up to Nashville, gets up to Louisville. So yeah, along this line, you could see there's energy there tomorrow afternoon, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. So where's the best energy for storms? Actually looks to be just down here. So South Carolina, Georgia, probably a little bit more of a risk. 
And then still up here, because the shear is just off the charts, we'll go a little bit further east, 7 o'clock. Yeah, it's not a ton. It's 500 to maybe 700 Cape. Certainly just enough to get things going, but it's weakening fairly, fairly quickly. We can look at a couple other parameters. Uh, the good old-fashioned significant tornado parameter, which shows the ingredients for tornadoes. You'll see the big surge ahead of the line, and look as this moves into the Carolinas. So yeah, there's some there. It's like a two over Charlotte and down. So any storm that can get going will have some fuel um, to feed off of and some storms get going. But let me show you an interesting parameter here. This is this helicity tracks, which is basically storms that'll be rotating. Um, we'll show you this. So we've got some ingredients there. We showed you the radar. There wasn't a ton of storms there. And when you look at the helicity tracks, there's just none here. Um, the holicity tracks are more confined to the Ohio Valley, Kentucky, up in here, um, which is an indication that the model, or at least the guidance, short-range guidance, doesn't see a lot of circulations working their way down the surface. This is the zero to three kilometer. Now, if you look up a little bit in the atmosphere, two to five kilometers, which is rotations um, more in the, in the mid-levels of the storm, you could see there's not as many either. So there's some good indications that hopefully... The worst of us will miss us. My biggest concern, though, is those ingredients are there briefly. So any storm, while there not, may not be a ton of them, the ones that can get going tomorrow, late in the day, into the evening, will have the potential to be severe. So I'm going to loop this one more time, and I'll go back because I think this is important to note. So let's go back. Basically, from about, I would say, 4 o'clock on Friday till about 8 o'clock, while those storms don't look really impressive, only takes one or two of these to tap into that shear or that wind energy in the atmosphere to become severe. So don't expect widespread storms. In fact, there might be less rain tomorrow than what we saw tonight and during the day today. But the storms that get going tomorrow, especially if they can organize at all, which means get into a line or get into individual cells, could potentially be severe. So it's a day we want you to stay weather aware just in case. It's certainly not the highest threat level, but it's one of those days, it's early March, that we need to pay attention.